start recording. All right. Reminder of what we're called to do, walk worthy of God, be fully pleasing to him, bear fruit in all good works, grow in the knowledge of God. So the priest presumes that we are studying his word to know him better every day. A reminder, please only ask questions on the member site. You can look at this comes from the announcement homepage of your member site and discontinue emailing questions. In the past, we had uh, gave the ability to people to email Anne or Ashley questions or me questions. And we discontinued that actually about six, maybe seven, eight months ago now. But some people just keep doing that. Um, and I understand if they feel like they're in a crisis, but they we have to stay safe. Uh, with everything that's happening with the boards these days and the uh, you know, we just, where we get in trouble is answering email questions or doing one-on-ones. That's where we can get in trouble. So that's why we do the Zoom calls. That's why we've added a second Zoom call in the week. So please um, ask your questions um, via the Zoom call and discontinue asking questions via email. Um, and then remember, you have free access to all your course, all the other courses. Um, I keep reminding you about that. But we are going to have other courses. I'm going to have an autoimmune course. I'm going to have a shorter uh, mushroom course. Um, those probably won't be done until January. Okay, here is a longer question. Um, try to figure out why I started out with regular bowel movements before I started with the program, and now I don't. When I got my diagnosis and went mostly keto and then started on a parasite cleanse, I had no problem. My bowel movements were much better. When I do have trouble, usually about 240 milligrams of magnesium at bedtime work. When that didn't work, I'd used aloe uh, capsules. So yes, those are the best. Now, neither of those things work and I'm having to rely on adding Senna tea. So I'm going to stop there just a second. So Senna can uh, be great, but it can cause some issues because it does work by stimulating peristalsis, which can cause cramping. Um, but other, if you can stomach the cramping, literally, um, there's nothing wrong with using Senna. So if you're noticing that your bowel movements aren't nearly as good, we may want to relook at your diet to see if there is something that's causing um, some issues. It can be inflammation in your gut. It can be that you're detoxing. Uh, so if it is that you're just detoxing and junk, dump, dumping a lot of stuff in your gut, that you know is not necessarily a bad thing, but we need to be making sure that we're adding enough fiber um, to get things moving. So do I'm not familiar with the aloe ferox product itself. We use the Super Aloe 250 from Ortho Molecular that we have private labeled. Um, phase six assist, I think it is what our label on that is. Um, um, and you can certainly up the dose of that. I don't know how many milligrams of the aloe is in that. And it's a specific aloe that helps with uh, constipation issues. Um, it's not just aloe arborescence. Um, I thought the daily enemas would help improve my bowel movements. Yes and no. I mean, you're not doing enemas to help your bowel movements. You're doing enemas to stimulate your parasympathetics. Um, so sometimes doing daily enemas can throw off your bowel movements. And that's, so that's a little misnomer that people have. The purpose of doing daily enemas is to stimulate your parasympathetics for help with detoxification and stimulation of your immune system. The only difference perhaps is I'm not drinking enough water since I had to give up drinking tea before I started my low histamine diet. I was drinking a lot of green tea and rubles tea, um, which I can't have now. Also the salt spectrum products, even though that's extra fiber, doesn't seem to be working. I didn't uh, I did give it to you partly for the fiber, so that is the purpose of it. Do I need to try something else? I know the set is harsh, 
Yeah, I would up the aloe. I don't know what the milligram doses of, of that is, but typically we start with 250 milligrams of that aloe. So some of the aloe products out there only have like 50 milligrams, so you're way under dosing possibly. So look at that product and then compare it with the super aloe 250. Some people take a couple of those a day, so they're taking 500 to 700 50 milligrams of that aloe. So I don't know what the dose of that aloe ferox product is. While doing all our research, we ended up talking to a competitor of True Rife who seemed to have pretty good machines. They were saying that a Rife needs to be 300 or 100 to 300 megahertz to affect cancer. How many megahertz is the true rife? Is that what they is what they said is true? So, um, with using frequencies, you can do um, different resonance of a frequency. So, um, wait back to that last question. The aloe leaf powder is a bitter extract. Um, so, I'm gonna I'm gonna I gotta remind myself about the um, super aloe so hold on one second and i'm going to pull up that product on my um, uh, screen uh, so i can answer that question more appropriately all right so is it is it tape aloe? So is it, it says, is it, is that what it says on the ingredients that this is aloe leaf powder and bitter extract, 430 milligrams. So if it's not cape aloe, it's not the same thing. So what really, so aloe leaf powder and bitter extract can be soothing on your gut, but it's the cape aloe. It's the type of aloe, cape. C-A-P-E aloe that you really need. So really but get this phase, it's called phase six assist, phase six assist. And that's 250 milligrams of Cape aloe. Start with just one a day because it will clean you out. Um, but it worked really well in the past because it was just nice and soothing for your gut. It wasn't really for the purpose of really cleaning you up. So we have never had anybody where the cape aloe didn't work. So in my book, The Seven Phases of Detox, I also list that in phase six, because that would be a phase six product. That's why it's called phase six assist, which is moving stuff into the toilet. And um, I would highly recommend the cape aloe. Uh, okay, back to the frequencies. Uh, so there's different residents. So literally you, so doing a different megahertz, um, the frequencies that um, Rife used were anywhere from uh, 10,000 hertz to over a million hertz. So um, that's what Royal Rife used. Um, at the time, now he had used different, lots of other frequencies too, but that's one of the things that some of, remember, most of Rife's writings were destroyed. They were taken, it was their gone. So, but what we have left is some little pieces of his work of what he used. So you are getting these frequencies, especially the higher frequencies in the foot bath programs. So his BX2, Frequency. So Rife believed that cancer was a virus and it was the BX2 virus, which he called, and that's what he was killing to destroy the cancer. Well, that's what he just believed at the time. It doesn't mean it's true. I don't think it's true. I totally don't believe that that's true. But we still use his frequencies. So everybody's program has those frequencies in it just because it might work. So that's the benefit of having, you know, 56 hours of frequencies that you're doing every week. So everybody has Rife's ancient frequencies in their program. Um, uh, so, but plus since, you know, the advent of Rife technology burgeoning back into existence in the seventies and eighties, now we have a lot 
more known frequencies for specific cancers, and all of those are in your program. And those are very unique to the type of cancer. So Rife's original frequencies were not cancer, were not specific to the type of cancer. Um, and uh, the current frequencies are very specific to the type of cancer. So we have both Rife's original frequencies and the current frequencies in your programs. I would also be careful, and I know you were talking to a competitor to Rife probably prior um, to coming on board with us. I'd be careful. There are some companies out there that I've spoken to that you you know I'm told I am I'm not loyal to True Right. I have no connection with the company. Um, I'm loyal to them that it's to the point that they've been you know very open and helpful and they do everything that they can for you know our members. Um, but if there's another company that comes along that I think produces a better machine, you know I'll switch in a heartbeat. Um, but that being said, I have communicated with a lot of these other companies. And I'll tell you, you talk about classical schmoozer salespeople that are telling fibs to their potential um, purchasers. You know, I I call them, I've called them and pretended that I'm just a patient looking for help. And they just tell absolute outright lies. So you just got to be careful. There's a lot of, there's a lot of dishonest people out there in the world. So. Um, so, and then, by two, what tumor marker blood tests would you recommend for squamous cell carcinoma of the tonsil like I have? CA-19-9, CEA, LDH, what's your suggested timing considering I've already started the program? So um, you can run a, you could run all three of these, but the problem is, is that there isn't really any specific tumor markers for squamous cell. <laughs> so the chance that these would be out of normal range is probably pretty small. So there are certain cancers that tend to be, um, you know, that where tumor markers tend to be good things to use as markers. Breast cancer, typically CA-19-9, 27 uh, and uh, and CEA and C and uh, uh, and LDH can be positive with breast cancer. CA ninety nine for sure can be positive with pancreatic cancer. CEA very common with colon and rectal cancer. Squamous cell cancer of the tonsil many times won't show any of these. You could run them. They're not super expensive tests to run and see if any are out of range and see, and then you got to pick, okay, this one's, even if it's within the normal range, but it's, you know, at the high normal, you could use that kind of as a marker. Um, so, you know, even a lot, there's a lot of people with breast cancer that show no tumor markers positive. So um, when tumor markers first came out, I don't remember when it was, but it was about 20 years ago or so. Um, there was a lot of excitement in the oncology field that this is going to be a great way to test and monitor care. Problem is, they're just they they can be for some people, and then they don't even show for other people. And then, not even more complicated because if you're doing chemo, well, then it throws all the two workers off completely. So a lot of oncologists won't even run them anymore because they're expecting that you're going to do chemo and then they wouldn't even use them. PSA is a tumor marker. So um, that's for prostate cancer. I was listening to a Chris Work video and he suggested not to run tumor markers test once you've started a program. I would totally disagree with that. You still want to run tumor marker tests. The only reason, the only one I would agree with that is if you're doing chemo. So if you're doing chemo, your two workers can spike and then it scares you. I wish I had known that before I got started because I want to avoid invasive tests to check progress. Do you agree with this? So no, if you're doing a non-invasive protocol, like a nutritional protocol, right protocol, et cetera, and you're not doing chemo, you can still run two marker tests. 
So you won't get a spike in tumor marker tests by doing a natural approach. You'll only get a spike in tumor marker test giving you a false, you know, high, false elevation if you're doing chemo. All these tests uh, read higher when you're killing off cancer. No, it only reads higher when you're doing chemo. As of now, neither my oncologist nor my GP will run the tumor marker test for me. So I'm going to have my chiropractor order them and attempt to have my insurance pay for them or just pay cash. They're not very expensive. Um, it, the uh, lab core cost for running the CA 15, 3, 19, 9, 27, 29 and CEA is probably about 75 bucks. So your chiropractor should you know, pass on that savings to you hopefully. What do you know about the frequencies of fabrics? Is that something to pay attention to? So no, I don't know much about the frequencies of fabrics and um, how that can affect us. But um, I think you're talking about just how different things can cause negative effect to us. Um, and yes, that there's truth to that. All sorts of things can cause us negative effect, but. I don't, I don't, I've not done any research on that, so I can't really answer that. The other day, you recommended Pectosol C for additional help detoxing uh, uh, gadolinium. You mentioned one to two scoops per day, but there are four Pectosol C products on your website. There's uh, There's one specifically for heavy metal detoxing, but it's not a powder. It's capsules. Um, so there are four products that have Pectosol C in them. So one is Metal X Synergy, and then one is the, the same thing that is our private label of Metal X Synergy, which is called Phase uh, Zero Assist. So that is specifically for. Is it specifically for detoxing heavy metals? Well, the name is Metal X Synergy. Yes and no. So it is just help support a chelating pathway, what I call phase zero. So no, it, it, the Metal X Synergy would be a fine choice. Um, that, that would be a fine choice too. That has some other things in it. It's one of my favorite products for chelation and helping pull metals and junk out of your body. I think in the in the uh, Zoom call, I just happened to mention Pectosol. Um, uh, Pectosol C is a, um, is uh, we have that in a powder form as well. And then we have Pectosol C in capsules as well. Um, the Metal X Synergy and the phase six uh, assist are the exact same products again, and those are capsules as well. Um, you know, you could do, I mean, if you're doing a smoothie and you want to just throw a powder in your smoothie and you're sick of swallowing so many capsules, I think I would just do the Pectosol C powder. If you're like, no, that doesn't bother me, I'd actually rather swallow a couple extra capsules and I'd take a couple of the Metal X Synergy slash phase six assist, or excuse me, phase zero assist. Um, the same thing uh, that has metal X, has Pectosol C in it, but it has some other chelators in it. Could you discuss the difference between the turmeric supplements? I have been taking a supplement from Curcuma longa, which apparently needs pepper added to make it bioavailable. My functional doctor said this is not as good as the full matrix turmeric, which you carry in your store as tomorrow clear. Is there that big of a difference? Should I make the switch? You recommend turmeric for me, but did not make a big deal about switching to the full matrix product. So I'm wondering if it's a big deal. Um, the, uh, the, Difference between the full matrix, so the um, orthomolecular did a bunch of research on using full spectrum turmeric. And I'm all in favor of using whole food products because there can be 
synergistic effects with other pieces in the whole food that make the, the what is called the active ingredient turmeric uh, of turmeric, which is curcumin, make, can make it more effective. So we use a lot of the tuberal clear, but we also use a lot of our curcu clear. So the curcu clear is not a full spectrum product. It is the active form of curcumin. Um, there's benefits to both, um, but I want to get back to the adding pepper. So a number of years ago, adding they found that adding black pepper to curcumin and other products help you absorb it because um, if you just do um, uh, turmeric powder, it's not going to be as readily absorbed. The problem with adding pepper, positive to adding pepper, is you do absorb more of the turmeric. The negative is you absorb a lot more stuff. Pepper increases the absorption rate of anything that's in your gut. So then, then they found that adding pepper to a product increased the absorption rate of metals and stuff that were in your gut and toxins that were in your gut. So um, most, most reputable supplement companies took pepper back out of their curcumin products. So most reputable supplement companies not all of them, but most of them do not contain pepper in their curcumin. So we don't recommend that you use curcumin with black pepper anymore. We used to, as a matter of fact, I probably got a video out there about using black pepper in with your curcumin, but that has been kind of not debunked because it does increase the absorption. The problem is it increase, increases the absorption of everything. So um, I personally use Curcu Clear and Tumero Clear, and I kind of alternate them. I don't, I take, sometimes I take actually our liposomal Curcu Clear now. Since we got that product, you'll even increase the absorption rate much better with the liposomal Curcu Clear. So I just finished, matter of fact, I looked at my table here just this morning and thought, where's my liposomal Curcu Clear? Oh yeah, I finished that last week. I was actually going to go downstairs and grab another bottle of it. Um, that has become my favorite. I think I get the better results with the liposomal curve. Chat question. Just to follow up on the aloe, the Ferox did clean me out in the past to the point where I was taking a half capsule. Oh, that's interesting. Try the, I'll try the Cape aloe as you suggested. I noticed that the foot bath water has turned dark instead of the coppery color. Um, so maybe it is the detoxing that's making my unusual constipation um, sure as ineffective it can be. So if it is getting dark, you are definitely detoxing, that's for sure. All right, any other questions? All right. Well, I'm glad we covered everything. We'll be back on Wednesday. Um, so I will see you in two short days. All right. Love you all. I'll be praying for you. Thanks again. Bye-bye.